can only stand tall if the foundation is strong. Proteins are known as the building blocks of life, ensuring we have a healthy body and lifestyle. Welcome to Protein X Protein Abhyan, our campaign to make you aware about everything related to protein. How much do we need it and where do we get it from? Through this series, we have been talking with doctors, nutritionists and wellness coaches to understand why most of the Indian population isn't aware of what the ideal protein intake a day should be. I'm Ambika Singh Kama and today we're joined by a very special guest. She was here for our launch of the Protein Abhyan Season 2 and again we have her with us Dr. Shikha Sharma, the Founder and Managing Director NutriWell Health India who has more than 21 years of experience in the nutrition space. Let's start off talking about awareness. You know, we've been talking about this even through this campaign. Why is it that as Indians we don't know what the ideal protein intake should be and how do we bridge this gap? So fundamentally, as Indians, I think uh, we look at food uh, in terms of only uh, vegetarian and non-vegetarian. That's it. And then you always look at that, okay, if you're having milk, you are done. Or if you're having uh, uh, some uh, cottage cheese, you are done. Not even cottage cheese. I think most people are happy if they are having milk. And that's, you know, the end of the yeah. nutritional information mm. or concern they have. So... Over the years, what has happened is that uh, Indian uh, diet plans yeah. have become more and more uh, towards very carb-rich foods. Yeah. And that also, if you really see, uh, it's mostly rice or maybe a little bit of flour or flour, rice yeah. and some grains. And it becomes deficient in many, many other things yeah. and uh, vegetables, fruits. So... What has happened is that uh, people are only having uh, a limited kind of foods mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the milk is just the only thing they are concerned about. Other things they don't worry. What are the signs and symptoms that one should look out for to know that, okay, our body is not getting enough of protein? What does your body like feel? Typically, uh, you know, when you start having a protein deficiency and uh, depends on the age, but if you're a baby... Uh, then uh, extreme form, uh, form of protein deficiency is protein energy <coughs> malnutrition mm. and it's a disorder with a, you know, with a big belly and, and very thin arms and legs. Uh, in adults, mostly the signs are very vague. It could be tiredness, fatigue, hair fall. Uh, it could be something like um, uh, you are exercising but your muscles are not uh, responding very well. I'm not saying bulking up but even toning up yeah. or hair. Uh, so, all those things point that they could be an Lack imbalance. Of, okay. Dr. Shikha, if I can also ask you, like in these 21 years, you know, you've had people coming to you, but do you see that shift happening where people are more aware and more conscious about the food they eat, like healthy eating or we talk about holistic well-being? Do you see that shift very obvious? Absolutely. You know, because when I started out, at that time, the standard advice was eat everything hmm. and run and you will burn it off. So there was no concept of nutrition. Nutrition as a word hardly existed. It was all about eat everything and you can burn. But now, and especially after the pandemic, what I have observed is people are concerned that are we getting the right uh, nutrients for our bodies? Because a lot has been talked about, about immunity, mm. about bone strength, about nourishing your body. Dr. Sharma, you spoke about diabetes, you know, so whether it's diabetes, obesity, we see a spike in lifestyle diseases. Can you tell us how can one look at dealing with this more in a preventive way rather than a curative way? I would say it's, it is the only way. It's the only choice we have. Because if you really see our bodies, are the, the raw material is all food. And if the raw material is depleted, I mean, we all know that you do construction of bridges. Mm. If the raw material is not good, it falls after a mm. few years. Mm. So imagine the body, it needs... <clears throat> all the things, the, the, the correct raw material, that means in your plate, you need to have leafy vegetables, which are also a very good source of protein, which most people don't know. Mm -hmm. You need to have vitamin-rich food. You need to have whole grains. Millets is coming up in a big way. So including millets in the diet. Mm -hmm. uh, then we need to also have something which helps us absorb, which is fiber, which is, uh, uh, you know, like uh, amla. It helps us absorb and maintain the gut biome. So I think that the colorful plate, the rainbow plate, yeah. needs to stay rainbow. Yeah. 
So just before we wrap, you know, you've spoken to us about awareness. You've told us where the gaps are, how we can bridge that gap. Just quickly and brief, if you can tell us, you know, five foods for veg as well as non-vegetarians, which really one should have in their diet and which are easy to also make at home and have. So I'll begin with the vegetarian. I'm a vegetarian, so I'll okay. begin with vegetarians. And also breaking the myth that vegeta- vegetarians have enough to eat in proteins. I think. I mean, vegetarians don't choose the right thing. Otherwise, they can there eat. Is there is enough. Okay. So the first thing I would tell all vegetarians is, please make sure you're having green leafy vegetables enough quantities because it will support your protein absorption. Mm-hmm. Second thing I would say is some of the superfoods like amla, uh, similarly uh, aloe vera, they're great for your gut. They will make sure that your absorption improves. Okay. Then I would say uh, any dairy product, especially mm-hmm. like cottage cheese or non-dairy also if you're vegan like soya, they're all good sources of protein. Uh, nuts and oil seeds are wonderful because they not only give you good protein, they also give you the right kind of essential fatty acids. And then of course what is important is that fiber. Yeah. Fiber is very important for an, you know a, a variety in your diet. Okay. So those are the things for vegetarians. For non-vegetarians, of course, you have egg, which is a, a comf- easy source of protein. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, you have chicken and fish. I'm not a great recommender of red meat. Yeah. Uh, but even with egg or fish or chicken, make sure you're cooking it light. Yeah. Okay. You know, like cooking it the right way, not very heavy. Yeah, meat. fish pakoras may not be part of the list. <laughs> yeah, so steamed fish is healthier. Steamed fish, fish yeah, or a grilled yeah. fish is much better. And of course, always balance by lots of vegetables and lots of green leafy uh, salads or, or you know things like that because that's the right way to balance. So I think the takeaway here for me is the rainbow plate. Thank you, Dr. Sharma, for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. So, well, with that, we've come to an end of this segment of the Protein X Protein Abhyan. But do send us your suggestions on what more you would want us to discuss about protein here. Write to us on our social media handles or log on to ndtv.com slash protein abhyan and take the pledge. Use the hashtag protein pledge. Thank you so much for watching. Mm-hmm.